on my Lanta. This thing just won't fire up. Serena, pass me that uh, adjustable wrench. Oh, no, the bigger one. No, no, that bigger one. That bigger adjustable wrench. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, oh dear. Without the right tool for the job, you can't get anything done. These are my top 10 tools for around your farm, garden, or homestead. My first tool has probably saved me more time than all the other things on this list combined. See, I'm the type of guy who likes to listen to some music while I do my farm work to drown out the monotony of life. It keeps me motivated, keeps me working. And I found that I was spending so much time moving power cords around and setting up radios. It's just wasted time that I could have been doing the task that I was supposed to. So I bought this. And what this is, is a radio that is powered by a rechargeable battery. And I find that I can probably get, you know, eight or 10 hours of music blasting per charge. All I have to do is go to the garage, grab the radio, and then bring it out. And it seems to be a little bit more water resistant than some of the, you know, other stereos that I've had. No promises there. I'm not sponsored for any of the tools in this video. There's other brands that would make a battery powered radio as well. I'm just saying that this is what I got and it saves me time because I can just get right to it. Well, since we got a radio, let's put on some music. Tool number two is probably my personal favorite, the Pulaski or Fire Axe. Now I've always worked in forestries. So we always have these in our toolkits, uh, you know, in case we have to, we start a little forest fire, we have to have something to fight it with. These are especially good for digging trenches. I'm constantly running into cherry stumps as I expand the, the farm area. And these cherry stumps are super hard to dig out. They, they don't look that substantial, but that wood just uh, is very hard to get through. Also, like nothing will dig a trench for me as, as well as this will, because uh, you, as you're swinging uh, and you run into like any sort of roots, you can just really easily and quickly switch over to the axe side, go through the roots and get back to the digging side. And you can actually, if you, if once you get the technique, you can actually pull a pretty reasonable amount of material out with every swing. And, uh, and you can get down pretty deep with them too. I was just using this for a two foot deep trench and uh, there, was, there was no other tool that I had. I had a little trenching shovel and that was way more work to bring out the material than uh, swinging this. So highly recommended. Now look, I'm not saying you don't know how to swing an ax because you're obviously very strong, but I have come across lots of people who don't know how to swing an ax. And the secret is that you swing through it. You go hard and you swing through the target and that's how you smash the wood just like you smash that like button. I, I go through at least one of these a uh, year with how often I'm using them. And, uh, and I'm hard on tools because I'm a big strong guy. So it's only natural that I break some of these. And now conveniently I'm located where uh, I have to dig out some cherry stumps. So I'm gonna dig out a cherry stump for you guys. My number three tool is tarps. You can never have enough tarps. Oh my God, you need so many tarps. One of my big lessons that I learned in my first year of living on an acreage is that, you know, nature will reclaim any spot it can. And anything that I put on the ground that I just meant to kind of like hang out there for a couple months, just got so overgrown with weeds that it would be a pain in the butt anytime that you would go to, you know, move something from there or like all my irrigation stuff is basically what I'm talking about. And all those hoses, they all got overgrown with weeds and you just be fighting with it whenever you needed access to it. 
So what I do now is I put down tarps. Clean, dry storage inside of a building is at a premium. And when you're farming, lots of your items are very bulky. I just don't have space to store all that stuff in my shop. So if I put a tarp down on the ground, pile up all my stuff, and then I put a tarp down on top as well, then I know that my products will be out of the sun and that they won't get, uh, you know, kind of binded with weeds. Now, I'm gonna give you a super tip for tarps. Go over to your local lumber supplier. My local hardware store, for example, has like this giant bin that's just filled with lumber tarps. And you can just go there and load them up for free. My number five tool is a cargo net for your truck. Man, does this thing ever make life easy when you gotta tarp a big load to go to the dump or when I'm going to the market. These things are so quick and they are very strong when you, when you tighten them down. So this one just has four hooks on the corners and you can get slack just, just that easy and then you pull it tight. So get a bit of slack, pull it tight. I always hated going to the dump with, you know, big loads of organic stuff because it was so hard to like get the tarp tightened down and then, you know, it would like buffer in the wind and rip to shreds. But all you got to do is throw a tarp under here and then, you know, tighten this down and it'll hold amazingly. They're very strong. I've had this one for like 10 years. I highly recommend getting one of these if you are always having big loads in the back of a truck or a trailer. My number six tool is harvest baskets. Another weird one I know, but these things are awesome and they again save us so much time. Different ones are more useful to me, so I like them more. Others are less useful or completely useless. These fold up ones are garbage and they just end up uh, they end up breaking really quick. They're just too weak. So I don't get any of the, the ones that fold up. I don't like them. Uh, these are probably my favorite for use around the farm. They're very easy to wash stuff in it. You know, the more whole space for water to go through, the easier it is to wash the dirt out. These ones, they, they stack really nicely. So these stack, but these, if you flip them around, they also nest. Right, so nesting is nice for not taking up as much space, but it's less important to me than having uh, the ability to stack them up nice and high and for them to be relatively secure. You know, you don't, you don't want these stacks to get all wobbly, but sometimes you can't get away from it. You need the bigger stuff. These ones I, I like as well, but the holes on them are pretty small. So when you go to wash in these, you can clog these holes up. But then there's a totally other use for harvest baskets. And that is whenever you're doing a, a work project, you know, and you've got your, your different little bits of fasteners and stuff like that, and all your little bits of garbage, and your tools, uh, you get one of these harvest baskets that <coughs> doesn't have any holes in it. And then you use it, to kind of put all your stuff in. And at the end of the day, when you don't finish your project, because you never do in one day, you can just, Put all this stuff to the side and you don't have to go put it away and then collect it back out for when you go to finish your project the next time it's just sitting there waiting for you harvest baskets also make a super easy way to bring all your kitchen scraps down to your chickens next up is pull carts we only have a two and a half acre property but it still takes me three minutes to walk from the bottom of the farm all the way up to the house. I know it doesn't seem like that, but I've timed it before. Just walking at a normal pace takes me about three minutes. And back and forth, back and forth all day long, that time adds up. So when you have carts, anytime you go to make one trip, you can you know, essentially make three trips out of it. Three harvest baskets filled with stuff. We use these all the time just to save our trips, save your body. You know, you don't have to lift it. They're really handy to have around. And when I'm doing a project, just like I did with the harvest baskets, a lot of times I'll put a harvest basket and a bunch of my supplies on one of these pull carts. Just uh, work off of a pull cart. Next up is another one of my favorite forestry tools. It's timber hooks. Timber hooks 
definitely aren't for everybody. Not everybody needs them. But if you do need them, they save you so much time and effort. Things that are, you know, moderately heavy, but more of an awkward lift, easy to move around. I use them in my work that's all about uh, pine beetle control. Uh, it's called fall and burn. Basically, uh, I run chainsaw, I drop trees that are infected with the pine beetle, and then we have to uh, buck them up and then pile them up, make big fires and burn everything of that tree that's bigger than like a pop can or so in in diameter moving big amounts of wood all day long these things are like a money maker for me but if you're doing firewood i could see them really helping you out as well here is how they work you got this pointy little tip on these ones you can interchange it when it gets old although i never do um, basically you swing into it and it'll it'll kind of hook in just a little bit uh, enough that you can pick something up and move it around and then when you want it to release you kind of turn it to the side and it should just pop out. I am able to chuck you know big giant rounds around with with two of these. Time for a little distance contest and see what I can do. Or you can cut chunks of wood in like 10 foot long sections and you hook into it and then you lift it up and you can skid it along just dragging it along so you're able to move really big pieces of wood uh, with very little effort because you know wood seems heavy when you can't get a good like handhold on it but if you have a good solid handhold then it's actually like not that bad to move it around here's a big one Here's the ultimate test. There is some massive pieces of woods that have been sitting in the exact same spot since before I bought this place. They were here when we got it two and a half years ago. They've never moved. They're old and you know filled with water. Some of them are like a one by one, one foot by one foot. They look very heavy. So let's see if I can lift one up. I would not be able to manipulate those so easy if I didn't have this. You know, obviously you don't really need to move beams of wood like that around for, you know, no reason. And it does cause damage if you use these in, you know, something that was important to you. But just an illustration of like how easy it is to move big heavy pieces of wood by yourself with timber hooks. I have two kinds of timber hooks. I also have these ones, but I never use them because I don't like them. I prefer this kind here little stronger construction, a bit heavier. It's nice to have a bit of momentum to swing in to get it to really stick in some pieces of wood. This next one is a must have if you live in a rural area. I mean, really, I think that they're a good idea to have anywhere for an emergency situation, but headlamps, headlamps. We have so many headlamps and we use them all the time because you know we are night owls, so we do a lot of our work at night. They free up your hands if you need light. They make it easy to keep working past the early sunsets in the Canadian winter so that we can stay outside and keep getting stuff done. They get used before every market that we do in the summertime because we're out late harvesting. But when you have a flashlight, the light isn't pointed in the right direction, you know. You can, it, it just it just doesn't work as well as with, with a headlamp. With a headlamp, the light is exactly where you're looking and it just makes for, you know, kind of like seamless transition from your daytime work to your nighttime work. But just, you know, plan on having some of these. Because of my profession of running chainsaw, one of the most important things that I can recommend for everyone to have for tools, I mean, obviously, you have to own a chainsaw to need these, but is chainsaw safety gear. You really shouldn't be running chainsaw without uh, pants or chaps. Uh, if you're dropping trees, should be at least wearing a helmet. Um, you know, if you're running saw all day, should be wearing hearing protection. Should wear like gloves for your hands. These are all things that I have to wear professionally, otherwise I can lose my tickets. I've just gotten in the habit of wearing them all the time when I'm at home and I start up my chainsaw. You just 
you just gotta wear it because you never know when something happens and you need them. The way the chainsaw pants work is basically there's a bunch of really good string in these pants and if you cut into it, uh, that string will get sucked up into the saw and it'll just bog down the motor and stop the chain. Doesn't mean that you won't cut into your flesh a little bit, but you won't have a giant, you know, gaping wound. You'll just have a small, clean cut as opposed to something that could be much worse. The way that I like to wear my saw pants, because uh, I find that they can be really tight around your waist, is, so say, you know, my, my waist size varies with the time of year, you know, anywhere between a 31 and a 33, but I usually get my saw pants in 36. I like to wear them as clown pants. For me, like, if you're not gonna get chaps, which, you know, most more home-oriented people get chaps, but if you're gonna get actual saw pants, then I recommend getting them really big, wearing them with suspenders, and then, uh, and then you won't have like any discomfort around your waist, and you'll be able to step over obstacles a lot easier. For boots, I prefer cork saw boots. Uh, you get a lot of grip right here when you're walking across logs and stuff like that. Good footing is super important when you're running a chainsaw, because when you slip, that's probably when you'd be most likely to cut yourself. Uh, if you have good stable footing, then you're less likely to slip. Saw boots do have some protection against cuts, but really your best protection against cutting yourself is proper technique. Even though you should be wearing your PPP, that is your last line of defense. The best way to not cut yourself with a chainsaw is to be careful where you put your chainsaw and make sure that um, if there was ever a kickback, you'd be out of the way, right? So don't cut with your face right in front of the saw so that if it kicks back, it comes right into your face. You know, just cut with the, your face off to the side. So if it kick back, at least it's not gonna, you're not gonna be in the line of fire. Another thing I like to do with the boots is I tuck my saw pants over top and then you're not getting debris, uh, you know, down into your boot all day. Makes life easy. As far as helmets, uh, you know, ear protection, eye protection, I find it hard to wear safety glasses when I run saw because they just get all sweaty and fogged up. So there's really not much point in it. If you're dropping trees, you really should be wearing a helmet. You know, trees trees are crazy. It's, it's really interesting to see how everything wants to come back to the stump when you fall a tree. If you fall a tree and it hits another tree and something comes off of that tree, quite likely it's going to get thrown and it's going to come right back to the stump. That's why it's important to wear a helmet. And if you're standing there and you get hit on the head by some limb, you know, there's a big difference between it knocking off your helmet and it, you know, seriously damaging your, your head. So wear your helmet when you're dropping trees, wear your ear protection if you're running saw all day, wear your face shield. You know, lots of cool people like to have a cigarette hanging out of their mouth and their, their face shield up, but you know, I've had it so many times where uh, sawdust gets in my eye or like a stick will whip you in the face. It just gets you all the time. It, it just all the time. So, you know, scars are cool. I will give them that. But uh, even still, wear your face shield, wear all your saw gear. When you live a busy life like I do with the farm and a young family, you don't have a lot of time for hobbies. My only single hobby is digging. I love to dig. It's my favorite thing to do. And that means that this being my best shovel is my favorite shovel in the world. I destroy things quite easily and I've gone through many shovels in my life and this is the only one that's ever stood up to uh, the rigors of life with me. I got a brand new one here. You can see the difference. I'm sure there's lots of other people out there like me who destroy shovels because they're made so cheaply. But with this one, you can dig super deep you can, you know, pry on it. There's a little bit of flex in the handle. Uh, this steel along here is really strong and it's never gotten any free play in it. Uh, they last really well, so can't recommend this enough. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that something in here was uh, useful for you. And if it was, you should like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.